Hey there, and welcome back to the Train of Thought, an educational monster train series where we fight the divinity in every run. This is going to be one of those random D&D &D updates, and I, I only do this because I finished a campaign. I know, I know, it oftentimes doesn't happen. Normally you hear about campaigns sputtering out or falling apart somewhere along the lines uh, we finished a campaign that went from levels 1 to 12 i'll admit definitely a bit sad that didn't go higher i was playing an artificer the whole way so you know level 14 would have been perfect level 15 would have been like what i really wanted to see I'm probably never going to play an artificer again. I do feel like the I had I didn't really like the class all that much. I had to do some weird jank in order to create it and to turn it into my own build and have something fun with it. But uh, but yeah, otherwise it was I think the quote unquote optimal play for it is pretty stupid. Just saying. Anyway, we reached level 12 and fought a lesser deity. I'm not going to say more than that. Uh, it is well. I will at least say which campaign it was. It was the Icewind Dale Rime of the Frost Maiden module by, uh, like the official module. Uh, really good, honestly. I I enjoyed it a lot. Obviously, there was a lot of homebrew in it in order to kind of like connect the story that we were telling. But the story beats were as expected in the module, at least. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we we survived. We we did the thing and lots of really cool stuff. I'm you know. As much as I give Artificer some dirt here because I didn't really think it was a great class in general or for myself, uh, I actually think it fit really well in the campaign. I won't say why, but there are some elements to the campaign that just felt really good about it. So it worked out in my favor. I had the opportunity to do some real cool stuff. So yeah, that's, that's that. Done with my small venture into tier three combat very sadly i loved that tier of combat a lot it felt really cool and now we're going back to level one for some spell jammer nonsense which will be fun uh, i've we're, we're starting that next week so that's exciting anyway that's enough about that let's play some monster train what did we do last time that's right, it was a cultivating sentient run with Eel Gorgon. A lot of fun. It, you know, it's not often that I run into Eel Gorgon, I find. There's just, it, it's a rare unit, so you can never count on it, but I don't know. I feel like that one shows up less than the others for me. For some reason, it's just kind of confirmation bias, I suppose, but, but yeah. So we had a good run with this. Iron Drop Cage plus Holdover Restoring Retreat ended up carrying a huge part of this run because we had Patient Seraph, and I wasn't really sure how to solve this otherwise. I took the Drop Cage prospectively specifically for this purpose, and we got the Restoring Retreat, so I went to town with it. Well, we also had some pretty sick Titan's Tooth and Offering Token play in there as well. A lot of just really good incanting and some good fun times had. We get past Sentient, we move on to... Ugh, Tethys. You ever notice she's got a... She's got a pretty big tummy for her size. She's a really weird creature when you think about it. She's like a... A fish person that's more bulbous than I would have expected. I suppose maybe she's closer to a frog. Maybe that's why. You can see she kind of has like a glowing tadpole tail maybe. But a lot of our other features don't really seem frog-like. I don't know. I mean, not, it's the first time I'm noticing this. Maybe she actually is going for a bit of a frog aesthetic there. Kind of weird. I hate her even more because I also hate frogs in real life. Uh, it's something you can learn about me today. I, I do not like frogs. They, they just make me mad. It's a very strange thing. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, brains are fun. Anyway, I think I mentioned this, but it did bring us up to a 177 win streak, so we're hoping to move on from there. Uh, and that's all I've got, so hey, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's hopefully not lose on Tethys. This is always the scariest one for me. I, just being honest, I look at this and go, woof, alright, this could be it. Uh, at any given time, it could be Stygian dregs with nothing but Lady of the Reforms, and wickless tycoons and then you have to jank together some insanity and that could be it that that's all it takes for this run to be a true nightmare but we'll see we will see woof
Oh my god, I saw the melting and I was like, they read my mind. Uh, hope you're all doing well today. We at least have a spell. Primitive Mold is something. We'll take it. It's better than the alternative here. Uh, awesome. All right, so hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing okay. I was really, I'm worried about this fight, this run because it's the first run of my recording session. And if this run ends up being terrible, I could see myself not wanting to record anything else today. And that would be very bad. I need to make progress on this week. So here's hoping. Anyway, we are a default Stygian exile melting, which means we have primitive molds, which are better than anything else we could get here. At least it's an incant, but woof still not a great clan combo otherwise i always feel rough here because there are dead drafts in melting and we have a champion that's not picking up the slack right this is important because if you have rector or fade or something obviously if you have any of the melting champions those units are fine right they can do a decent job and like Lady of the Reform plays with Burnout Rector pretty well. I'm okay with that. It feels good. So you can you can pick up a bit of the slack. The problem is Tethys is terrible. And you combine a bad champion with bad unit drafts, and it can be deadly. So we're facing, let's see, Dazed Talos, Rage Arcus, and Chaste Seraph today with Titan's Gratitude, Hallow Drippings, and Urchin Spines. The cards are fine. None of them are great. They're fine. They're all they're all at least spells. Some of them get consumed, which is good. And then the spell at least does some damage. I wish this did at least 40 damage. I think if this were a 50 damage card, I'd feel pretty good about Titan's Gratitude. The fact that it's not is really tough, right? Yeah, I think that's really the thing that kills me about it here is if this were a 50 damage card, I think then you could 10 in piercing minus one it and it would hit 100 damage and that would be a good card. I would like that. Or at least it would be functional. The fact that it isn't that good is a tragedy in my opinion. But we'll see. It's at least something. We'll take what we can get. We have temples on two, three, four, seven, and eight. So a good spread. Three in the early, two in the late. I like that. Dupe on 8 is magic side, nothing great. There's a removal dupe on 7. Competes with a steel shop with caverns. It's okay. Good steel shop on 6 with a vortex and caverns. I like that. There is a magic shop if needed. Interesting. We have a removal magic shop hoard on 5, which is good. It's competing with a kind of bad trinket shop, but at least there's money in the middle, so maybe. We'll see. Removal dupe, a remnant banner on four, competes with just a horde and some money and health, I suppose. We have double steals early as a result. We get the remnant banner, Stygian banner. I'm definitely leaning away from the remnant banner. Let's see if I can go to this magic shop for the Stygian banner. Double Stygians is going to feel a lot better with Tethys in general and is a much more coherent line. There are also a lot more units on that side that are pretty competent. So it is Tethys. We look at champion first. Chill wind every time. This at least cleans up a little bit of the early game, which I like. Raider's Quill or Concussive Coals? The answer here is Traitor's Quill because I have some useless hallow drippings and this Urchin Spines can blast some stuff. It will hopefully clean up the early game a bit. We're not strong enough to take this other horde here. No, we have no backline access here. We move on. Again, another just moment of weakness of Tethys. She's not strong enough to answer that. I don't actually care if Tethys dies to this Mark of Invasion. I think we can answer it, though, between all of our front pings. Yeah, so this isn't great, but we can actually clear top floor here. You just drop Tethys, and we blast, blast, blast here, which is fine. Sure. Like, I mean, you look at this, we would never have gotten... <laughs> Goodbye, Tethys. Uh, let's see, that's three primitive molds that we've seen. Wow, no, no train stewards. We would never have gotten the collector here. It's potentially possible that we could have, by the way. So we could have taken none of the Mark of Invasion. We play Tethys, and then we would have put the double hallow drippings into the bottom floor to clear them out. Which is kind of an interesting situation to see. So... 
We, we get Tethys back. I don't really mind her this whole situation. I just drop her up top, and then we actually put the train stewards in back here. Do we? If I draw the other primitive mold, I mean, I definitely need the other train steward down, I think, is important, right? This is 25. 25 doesn't kill the front guy. I actually leak this unless I do Titan's Gratitude here. I think it's worth it to clear that out. Yeah. Okay, this is actually some good draw, I think, anyway. We do Tethys in front. She burns out on the later turn. Tethys landing. That's strong. We can actually up. By Titan's Gratitude, we get the whole floor, I believe. Right? Yeah, that's actually really good, believe it or not. I'd like to... Okay, we're going to Urchin Spines the boss. That helps. I want to hopefully hit one of these primitive molds on this next turn. If I don't, this sucks. All right. Hey, look at that. We're so good at the video game. And then she crunches, and we also hit him with Titan's Gratitude, and it looks fine. We don't even access the back line, but we're good there. Only taking two damage, and you get the get the uh, 25 extra gold compared to if we'd gone for the collector you know fair enough fair enough i'm going to take the offering token here it's something i don't want the other ones molded is for sure the pick i don't need further burnout extension right now i like molded because it can bring back a targeted unit and is a spell okay 175 is an annoying number we don't have a great holdover target, but we also don't have a great multi-strike target either. So I think both of these shops are probably dead. I think we're much more likely to see a good unit out of Stygian. So we're going to go to the Stygian banner, basically, is where I'm at. So remove consume. A 20 consume is good because it turns frozen lances into even bigger bombs because of the traitor's quill. Cool. We see a shark. I can do a lot of mean things in this run with a shark. We'll take the shark. That's very good. I'm going to 20 consume a Frozen Lance. Although I should consider maybe the Titan's Gratitude. Just absolutely blast one of these things out. Those are both pretty good when you think about it. We're not going to take shards. I mean, we're not strong enough. There's just no world where we are. Like, again, 10 and piercing into the Titan's Gratitude doesn't get me to a number where I feel good about it. So I'm not going to do it. I don't think this is a reroll angle here. The minus ones aren't that great. This Frozen Lance is doing what? 26 plus 30, so 56 damage. That's pretty good, actually. I'm going to hold off on blasting a uh, Titan's Gratitude, I suppose. I'll 20 consume this. I'm going to toss a minus one at the molded, at least. It is a card I want to be able to play when I draw it, so that's good. And we move on. It's just a sad Tethys start. I will absolutely click the unit draft, and I will struggle through whatever is required here. Every single time. Now, I do strongly like the idea of Shark to clear backlines, and then Tethys up top. You could... Double primitive molds are rough. In an ideal world, I'm reviving the shark into Relentless and elevating him would be my preference. I could play Tethys with Titan Sentry straight away. The problem is it's definitely not killing this overcharged apprentice. We take like six from that, unless I see another something. It's what, 19 damage coming in? I could play it down and then get the one the six frostbite and then five frostbite to an 11 but i don't like that i do want him dying on bottom floor though so i think the play here is titan sentry bottom at this upstairs now we could also just straight up bottom floor this whole thing and then elevator everything it's not a bad idea I'm going to do that, actually. This is a, an extreme primitive mold angle. 
that I don't think is very common otherwise. Yeah, this is not something that I do normally. We're going to take the Train Steward up top. I think it's a good call. And then I just blast the Titan's Gratitude downstairs. We play nothing else. And it's okay. And our goal here is to just full elevator this. Cool. The only question I really have is... Train Steward? Probably not. I only have the one Primitive Mold coming up. I think we don't do this. We just let it ride. Urchin Spine's good. I am going to just do a hundred and something damage to that boss, though. It's pretty good. I could drop the Train Steward here, but I'd like to either get Tethys or Titan Sentry. I don't think there's any way around it, and I don't want to draw here. So... I think the angle is we just let it sit. Yep. Seems good to me. I get the one primitive mold here. Although, don't you just do hollow drippings and kill the boss? Never mind. It's easy. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Trader's Quill. Very cool. Crystallis is a good spell that I will grab here. Just an extra little blast that I appreciate. Always good. It's hard not to take a draft, but it's also hard not to take a stealth tomb here. We're seeing another Stygian banner. There is the possibility of a remnant banner here. So this could end up being a paraffin enforcer run. This is a very difficult selection is where we're at. We have really good reforms, so a draft could be excellent. I struggle with this decision what is more important the stealth or the draft the draft is such a killer infusion and could in some universes become a very formidable line i think taking the draft is important actually because our line is otherwise unsecure right now i can maybe solve survivability in a few other ways also i can reform i can just bring everything back when it dies inevitably i could theoretically assemble something that goes behind shark so shark tanks and then we have the draft going ham so i think the draft is the most likely to pay out for me here also last consideration shark wants endless more than the tomb does so we take the draft here and hope for the best okay so with the draft in mind we see a legion of wax now can I do anything cheeky with a Legion of Wax here? That is the real question. I don't think there's a super cheeky angle. Right? Let me think about this for a moment. Obviously, we could see another Wickless Tycoon. And then Legion of Big Money, which is fine. I'd need some payout for the money. You could go Lady of the House and then put the draft in it it is an option that is a functional line if i see i don't know hallowed halls or something problem is it doesn't scale offensively right there's just no offense presence whatsoever it's just a big hitter it's not bad though it also is an immediate payout for all the reform which i kind of like what could this run look like let me think about this for a minute I could see an incanter, and then I just go all incant. If I do that, what am I hoping for here? Like, what is the legion angle? I'm trying to think, is there something here that I'm missing? There's legion of tax, of course. I could just high roll into a paraffin enforcer, and then it becomes my run, probably. So you've got that option as well. I think the paraffin enforcer is a high roll no matter what because I have a draft, so kind of whatever. It's a one in six though, and I only have like what two more chances to see it potentially. I do get a removal dupe. Is there a self infuse? I mean shark, right? Shark self infuse is nutty if I can see it, so I probably do that or at least dupe the shark. Lady of the house might be a necessary pick for Tethys for not Tethys with Talos. I'm just trying to think. I don't think we pull it off with just the, haha, I reformed Tethys, or I blasted the boss with some consume cards here. I'm going to need some angle here. 
I think the lady is the most likely to be important. Yes, I think so. We'll take her. I should take her, and I did. Okay, we're going to have to go to the steel shop. There's no question about it. Let's look in the temple. Plus 30. Intrinsic is interesting. Quick, not great. I'm going to buy the plus 25 into the shark, though. That's for sure. I have enough money to re-roll this and take whatever it is. A multi-strike. Got it. Okay, let's look in this banner. Siren. We have the Siren with a multi-strike and a plus 25. It's pretty good. That's, that's pretty solid. I could theoretically use the Lady of the House Infusion, oddly enough. It's odd, but the thing is, is the Burnout 3, and then I get Burnout 10 from the Hallow Drippings, which I super play on that floor. And it's not bad. Multi-Strike Siren. I mean, this the, the nice thing about the Siren Multi-Strike angle, it's good, but it's also not good, right? Because think about this. I also have the Multi-Strike Lady of the House with a Draft Infusion angle, hitting three times. That's pretty strong, and I could toss a plus 25 in it right now, and it plays nice with reforms. The problem is how do you scale this? Like, where is the damage on your floor coming from? Really not a lot of it is the problem. You just hit for, what is that, 105 damage? You just hit for 105 damage, and you make three of these, and you hope that doing like 305 damage a turn, plus the shark with endless eventually being enough. And that kind of gets there. As long as you can assemble the Relentless Floor, it does win. I think if this were Siren of the Sea, I might jump on it and go with the multi-strike in the shop. It would also matter more if that was an Incant Armor 2 versus a plus 25, right? I think the plus 25 maybe seals me into going on the Lady right now. Because I could assemble this Infusion and then immediately dupe it for some serious mid-game action. Yeah, I think it's got to be skip here and we frenzy stone the lady. Yep, and we give her a plus 25. So she is an absolute truck now. We're going to give her the draft infusion right away because this is a huge power up. And we're going to prepare for an overflow or an X5. Oh my gosh, X5 on that lady of the house is bad, but good. <laughs> Would I seriously X5 her? She does 105 damage and has some real solid everything. She's pretty darn good. I could also maybe see it hallowed drippings or hallowed halls rather. Is this winning? <laughs> I at least X1 her every time. No matter what, we give her an X1. But like, this, I, I probably want three of her on my run. This is a lot of, I'm going to do this. This is not something I have done in a long time. Just the fully upgraded unit with an infusion and then you X5 it. And we kind of just chill here, I think. I mean, I guess you could, like, plus 30 the Titan's Gratitude and hope for the best. It's not bad, right? It does kill something. Sure, I actually do think that because we no longer have to dupe our unit, I can do things like take a plus 30 into a Titan's Gratitude and create, like, a fun thing. You could have also potentially done a plus 30 on that and then X5'd it, which would have been interesting. Maybe with a minus 1 attached. There could have been, like, a big spell angle here, which would have been fun, too. But we got this instead, so whatever. Now the game just needs to give me Hallowed Halls, and I'm pretty sure this goes out of control. Tethys, sure, friend. Just play a draft-infused insane thing downstairs. Remember, this is days, so I can't do anything super crazy here. But I guess we're just going to Frozen Lancer. It's fine. Yeah, sure, whatever. Kill my bottom floor. I actually do not mind... We play another lady. There it goes. Huzzah. All right, cool. Get the whole bottom floor is cleared. Oh no. Top floor. How do I survive? You do lady, lady, hallow drippings up here. 
which is a good floor for it. We just blast the boss to the best of our ability. Bottom floor is going to burn out pretty soon, but... Remember, I also have a shark on this run, which is pretty entertaining to consider. <laughs> well, okay. That's Monster Train, I guess. Goodbye, shark. <laughs> oh no, we leaked something downstairs, I suppose. Maybe I'll eventually... Yeah, Primitive Mold, let's go. Let's go. I am going to just... Alerter brings upstairs for relentless purposes. I'm going to blast this bottom dude. Seems okay. And then just full send here, I think, is the angle, and she wins downstairs. I mean, this is a weird one because it's strong for now. It's a lot of damage. Don't get me wrong. If this unit were not fully upgraded, this would be a nightmare. Is Formless Child actually sick? That's scaling, right? What is happening? Okay, yeah, Formless Child is sick. It's better than Gifts for a Garden Remnant Pact here. Yeah, you just get it killed, and the only units that die are ladies of the house, which gain plus 60 damage from it. Yeah, okay, Formless Child, let's go. I don't want... You could have gone... Oh my gosh, what could have happened? You could have had the Nameless Sirens, and then gone Guard of the Unnamed, and like done an X1 on it, and got an armor from this. It would have been fine. But you would never have x 5 the Nameless Sirens because the reason why I even consider this, they don't require any maintenance. I don't have to go and play stuff on their floor or whatever. They are just humongo stat sticks. They're like Demon Fiend except better, right? Like, imagine if Demon Fiend didn't cost 4 Ember and... Yeah, that's basically it, right? It didn't cost 4 Ember and you just had multi-strike re-hitting Demon Fiend that had 75 life. And he would just beat face. I would definitely X5 him in that universe, but yeah, I guess we have everything we want. Space is going to be really good here. Just universally so. I want to fit three on a floor. Okay. What do I removal dupe now? Anything? What could be in this banner that I care about? Anything? Do I remove the shark? I, okay, we're in some uncharted monster train take the wheel kind of energy. I do think cutting a bunch of train stewards is going to be important. They're literally never going to get played. The dupe might as well be a primitive, I mean, not primitive mold, a hallow drippings? Extinguish plus 20. Yeah, you might as well go removal dupe. I certainly think it's better than the other side, which is just money and some health, which is bad. Remnant Banner has a Lady of the Reformed and a Paraffin Thug. No chance. I have too many units, right, is the thing. So at this point, I just, just draw me the ladies. Just bring it on. It's fine. We're going to cut. I mean, it's all units, right? We're going to just drop these train stewards. They are unplayable and almost undrawable. <laughs> I, I don't even know where they go. Maybe I actually just dupe the molded here. I don't know what to tell you on that one. Purge card is probably pretty good. Spell chain. Spell chain, huh? I mean, I'm, I'm immediately like, well, do I spell chain the Titan's Gratitude that does 10 million damage and then immediately dupe it for, I don't know, a lot? Problem is, it costs one ember and then two ember. That's a lot that's expensive. I guess we'll upgrade Tethys. Sure, I'll, I'll give her handheld totem here. She's going to be a backline answer, I think, to some extent. The sweep is fine. Okay. It's fine. Now, purging a Frozen Lance is probably pretty good. I definitely beat an upgraded Pyre Stone, whatever that party boy is. I think I just kind of lean into how in the universe do I kill other stuff? The spell, spell chain is an interesting idea. I could, I'm debating this Titan's Gratitude and then making another one. It's strong. Especially when my deck gets down to the point where there's not much else going on, right? It's pretty good. It's a pretty good spell. If I can make enough things zero cost. I don't need... I guess magic shops make things zero cost here. It's pretty okay. I do have a dupe here. What am I doing with this? 
a tough one. If you can play this Titan's Gratitude a bunch, I mean, the thing is, is how are you defeating Seraph with this floor is the problem. And the real answer is I think it has to involve Formless Child somehow to create a backline capable of killing Seraph. Because, well, what do you want from me otherwise? What do, what do you want? I think purging a frozen lance is going to happen here. This is an important choice no matter what. The incants are not it here. The spell chain is good, but I don't know about this. It's expensive is the problem. My biggest problem with this is I have to reduce almost everything to zero cost for this to even be remotely playable. I would be leaving in purge copies that are pretty good. I think I'd rather make like a minus one to that. We just dupe it normally right now. Dupe it for the 10 shards instead of the 20 shards and then just put minus ones in them. I actually think that's way better. Yeah, that's just way better. Just dupe it in this current form. We need some big spell power here. I think this is it. Yeah, okay. We're not even going to consider the self-infused shark because I'm never drawing him until like floor seven or like ring seven. Not ring, wave seven. That's the word I'm looking for. He may end up actually getting removed. 60 shards here is acceptable, I think. I'm not going to take the spell chain, and I don't think the infusion does anything for me here, so we just kind of move on. Sure. Magic shops are nice. I am interested in an endless for formless child now. I can take this armor emblem, not a problem. I'm playing like all floors, so whatever. We just do. Wow, Tethys on floor one. In incredible. So what you do is you put the Titan Sentry middle to guarantee Collector. And we toss Tethys here as well for no real reason other than we can. Sure. Cool. I like that. Here's a lady on the bottom floor. And you toss the Formless Child in as well. Sure. That way when it dies, we're okay. This Frostbite, I think, will kill this. Right? Three drafts. I mean, three ladies. You play one upstairs. We clear it. Good job. Go team. We're going to play one bottom because that seems cool. And I'm going to play another one top because that seems cool. Okay. Sure. You just, you just crump, crunch through a whole bunch of stuff. And we play some stuff upstairs, I guess. I may as well Titan's Gratitude something out here. We'll blast the bottom floor. Sure. Yeah, whatever. Cool. Purge upstairs. I like that. Now, I could... It's coming up? No. Oh, there's a, a reform coming up. And I have the offering token, so I'm pretty likely to see it. I think there's only a... If it's literally bottom card, I miss it. It's unfortunate. I do get another lady. She just goes middle, I suppose. I think the best angle here is you aloe drippings upstairs and allow the bottom floor to reform. Seven turns. I'm gonna, yeah, I wanna let that happen. We'll let that ride. Cool, we see the molded here, which is very cool. I wanna do lady in front. We urchin spines this and can blast the front one and then we'll draw past some of these train stewards we almost get the kill here which is pretty wild two of those we win on middle of course we actually kill with the huh, we kill with a frozen lance which is fun okay we get everything i mean I, i'm not worried about it but you start to see the the cracks in this is the problem you're, this does not scale. So I pretty much none of these cards are helping me. Ice Empire is good, but like what? None of this is helping me win. Sap could do it. I could go in on Guardian's Amulet here. As long as I get enough turns and then sap the bosses to zero, it is functional. I mean, maybe so. I need a boss answer, and this is shown to me. Yes. I guess. Memories of the Melted, no. Sacred Wicks is cute. Remnant Host, I don't think so. No, we're not doing Harvests. Sacred Wicks is a 30 spell, a 30 damage blast with Traitor's Quill, and it is technically Reforms, right? I think I need to just skip cards, though. I have 32 cards in this deck. I need to clean it up. 
We're going Magic Shop, which is fortunately extremely good here with the Vortex and the removals. I mean, the Vortex and the... What is that, a Horde? Yeah, a Horde. Cool, we're gonna look in the temple first, I mean the shop first, just to think about it. Okay, my, the plus stack stone there is pretty good. Sinner Salve is a little late and not that great, but Melting Spout is like literally dead. I guess Formless Child burns out now? Formless Child tank? I, mm, ugh, I mean... Yes, I kind of would prefer him to live until he, the first front person dies. So I think Sinner Self is better here. The Burnout one is actively detrimental on Formless Child here. Okay, I'll take it. It's worth at least 25 gold to me, which is fine. I think double stacking the Guardian's Amulet may be the angle here. And then toss a minus one at it. Well, I think the minus ones need to actually be the big blast cards here. I think there's no world. I need to find a way to make sure they're playable every turn. So these are the big ones. I'll take the double stack into the sap here. This could potentially be it, I think. I'm going to re-roll now. A plus 10 is, I guess, not bad. I should maybe buy this. I can afford it. Yeah, sure. I can afford it. Okay, if I hadn't gotten that money, I might not have, but we can do it, so it's fine. Permafrost is kind of fun. Permafrost on the Molded is good. I like that. 20 Consume is great. Remove Frozen Lances, turn them into big bombs. Love that for me. I do think the Ember Stone is critical. Yeah, it needs to go into the Titan's Gratitude that is big and upgraded here. Yes. Permafrost. I mean, I don't have many discards. You could permafrost the Guardian's amulet and then hold on to it until you see it until it discards accidentally or intentionally. What an interesting idea. is functional if i have two of these cycling and i discard and play them every lore it's actually pretty good i only have three four discards i suppose they could discard each other but if i can set if i could line up the discard on this that's pretty killer the alternative is i hold on to a reform here which is good or the alternative is i actually just buy a removal Cutting cards, getting down to sub-30 might be good. Titan's Entry is like a fine unit, but I kind of don't see him playing a role in my endgame at all. He's actually not great. Let me, let me count this up. How many cards are actually in this deck on Reform, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 cards on redraw is not bad. Cutting some cards here is good. If I get, if I have to reform stuff, I would very much like to reform ladies as a priority. Or I suppose formless child, if possible. If I can assemble the formless child nonsense where lady dies formless child reforms it immediately and then i only have to reform the formless child this could be good shark is not it here is the way i should describe it i might consider removing him and then just yeah i actually think cutting shark here is correct believe it or not we're going to chew through units for the time being and he draws so late that he's just unreliable yeah, it's your time, bud. Goodbye. Okay. I consider the money. I'm seeing money on this magic shop already. I could turn it into a removal. Yeah, okay, I will. I think that converting this into a removal is basically just really strong, is the way I would describe it. I'm probably going to... Man, it's a good steel shop. I mean, I guess I could look for an endless... Yeah, I probably will go to that steel shop, look for an endless for the formless child, and then chill. Maybe see an overflow. I don't know. Okay, we're going to go ahead. I don't think I need to buy this removal now, so let's save our cash. Yeah, all right, whatever. Multi-strike, kind of don't care. 
I have enough to get through the mid game. I have so much frontline power here is the thing. It's just like lady, lady, and then bottom floor is cleared now. I guess I put Tethys middle and then I will blast this bottom just to save some damage here on the front and we cruise that. Cool. Cool, anyway, here's another lady downstairs. Here's one middle. Blast the floor. I'm gonna draw past something and then I'm gonna just kill this bottom guy, I guess. It's fine. Cool. We're, we have a, we're so front loaded, it's kind of whatever. I do want Tethys to live. So here we're gonna Hallow Dripping's middle and then I'm going to Crystallis and send the bottom guy. That's good. I guess we kind of just send the Hallow Drippings, right? I don't mind the reforms, so I guess we play it middle and a lady upstairs. We're at the stage where I feel like I actually just have too many of the ladies. Sure, if I do that, I actually kill extras. Yeah, cool, because I was like 35 gets the swing on that. We kill the mid guy. Cool, all right. That's we're gonna chew through this because monster train reasons, but you know, it's like, all right, we did this. Go us, I suppose. I don't know, there's just not a lot really to say here besides, okay, here we go. It's just five turns, I suppose. I am gonna blast this boss with 175 here though. That's pretty good, it turns out. This is, I mean, this just gets through five turns, thanks to all the burnout, and then hopefully we reform them, and yeah, we just win on middle, actually. I was gonna say, you just reform this floor now, and we elevator them up. We hope for the best, but we're actually just fine here. You just full send, and it's okay. There's just enough turns here that we chew through this low damage boss. Sure. Give me hallowed halls on this run, please. Rules of containment, sure. Titan's Tooth, Horfrost, Effigy, Cuddle Hex. Man, Stygian's got some bad cards, doesn't it? Titan's Tooth is fine, but it's not the answer for this particular run, I don't think. No. Eh? Uh, shame. Yo, Crushing Demise actually is incredible here. I will grab it. Just kill my unit so I can immediately reform it. Turns out that's good. Okay, we're gonna go to the Steel Shop. I'll take removals. Maybe we see some good nonsense here. I'm looking for an Endless. Quick. It's not what I want. I'll take the horde. Hell pact. No payout for this. Boon of the blacksmith or infused mallet. I guess it's boon of the blacksmith. First hell pact. I mean, if we see either of the X costers, that's really cool. It could be fully dead though. I. I don't, man, this run kind of is dumb. This is, this is Tethys classic. You've got some stupid run nonsense happening and then you're just like, all right, well, what are we doing? How are we winning? How do I kill Seraph? <laughs> That's to be determined. I don't like not having an answer to that at this point. I feel like it has to rely on Formless Child somehow, which is not great in my opinion. I think Boon is just a more secure option because things will start leaking and I'd rather them not kill me. Infused Mallet is terrible. First Hell Pact is good sometimes. Good maybe. There's two cards that can benefit from this short of a crazy high roll on a cavern. I think we just take the Boon. I don't think I lean into that high roll opportunity here. The quick here, right? I don't care about it. The removals are nice. I may consider cutting some ladies. We'll see. Let's look at the caverns first. Interesting. I can make one tiny. Make it tiny, huh? Jam even more of them on the floor? I mean, yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Tiny lady? Weird. I can't really benefit from anything on the steel shop, so let's re-roll for an endless, maybe. Okay, we get another multi-strike, sadly. I can't benefit from that. 
And this run could have looked much more normal if I had just multi-striked the Nameless Siren and held out for the second multi-strike with the Guardian of the Unnamed Infusion, right? There would have been like a very normal, hey, look, we have a floor kind of stuff. Instead, I have this. I think we cut cards because I don't really see the value in holding on to more stuff. Like this multi-strike, what am I going to do? Multi-strike formless child here? I think burnout one is a bait here. I need him to die at very fixed points. So that's fine. I do get two more cuts. I think we're going to, we're looking at what? Drop this last frozen lance. If I see another 20 consume, I'll just put it in the other Titan's Gratitude. It's fine. If I see too many more, I might put one in the Crystallis too. Yeah, let's drop Frozen Lance here. And then I want to drop a Primitive Mold, I believe. I don't like dropping the density of these, but I would rather redraw this Guardian's Amulet like 50 times than any other card. So I do consider that valuable. You know, removal dupe again, or am I going to go for the steel shop and look for endless? I do think endless formless child may be the angle, and I don't really need to dupe anything, I guess, other than I would take another Titan's gratitude here. We'll chill for the moment. Save our cash to side. I think we beat Arcus, but it's going to start looking very flimsy, <laughs> is, is where I'm at. You're going to start looking at this and going, hmm, this doesn't look like it's going to win. In fact, I think it's so rough, we're going to... I might... I kind of want to do... Interesting. I kind of want to do Lady Crush Reform immediately. Yeah, we're going to Lady Crush it, Reform her, then she drops. And I want to put Tethys on this floor because we at least get some damage into the back here. Okay, so my angle now is... I could do 300 damage into the boss here, which actually is probably really important here. So let's do that. And just full send on this. I kind of, hmm, four turns. I kind of like to reform this floor into Relentless. So let's not Drippings that. I'm gonna, actually gonna save the Drippings and blast this front dude here. Yeah, okay, fine. Getting 300 damage in there feels a little bit good, right? We'll take it. I do think it is Draft Middle here. I wanna try to squeeze out hundreds of damage whenever I can. So every little hundred here, I do want to play into. We lose front lady, which is okay. I want to drop in second lady here. I think this is a good opportunity to just send it a little bit. I'll draw past. Sure, sure, seems good. We push like a hundred and something through now. That's pretty decent. Okay. And yeah, they all burn out here, but the big payout is yeah yeah okay okay so i think the angle is we're losing someone here hmm interesting so i think this is a really good formless child whoever gets pulled back fine i'm gonna blast bottom here which kills front dude we're gonna work a little bit on top because i want to get through that spell shield and use the spell weakness here okay top floor is cleared out we do pull back yeah big tethys energy here is fine we do big tethys middle not actually my preferred hit here but it is acceptable we're gonna do double primitive molds i need to reform these units Ooh, okay, so you play Lady Down now. Tethys actually doesn't have Burnout because she came back from Formless Child. Strange but true. You're not wrong. 
I want to have a formless child die now, then? You, I suppose, should. You just formless child up front. We not Titan's gratitude here. Okay. Blast the bottom floor, I suppose. Door. Technically, that curse doesn't threaten me, which is very funny. I want to... Third lady downstairs. Yeah, here we go. 75 by 3 is pretty good. I could crush this. So the thought process is you crush reform. I think we mold back no matter what here. And I'm going to play the formless child again. Yes. We're going to play big lady downstairs. I think she's worth it formless child i then play upstairs and i immediately crush out cool for a really big damage lady on middle which i appreciate and then i can reform another cool and we have a solid mid floor here now too i think we win this no matter what right yeah i mean we we clock this in a big way. I also open up this spell weakness angle here, but we win this fight. Okay, if we can kind of do something similar for the other bosses, it won't be too bad. Wickless recruitment. Dang, no hallowed halls on this run. Really was hoping for it. Deep offering is uh, pretty okay. It's pretty okay. I'm taking draw here for sure. So, withdraw in the bag. What do I do with deep offering? What is the angle? I guess I could potentially intent on death the formless child. How do we feel about that? It's good, question mark? I don't think we're going to have any problem getting her killed is the thing. So I think we just let it happen. I don't see... Like, there's too much alignment required for the draw order for that to be good. Okay. This is a bizarre run. I, this thumbnail is going to be unhinged, and I don't really know what else to tell you, honestly. It's just going to be rough. Okay, I mean... I think we skip this. I'm toiling over the deep offering here. It's good for Guardian's Amulet angle, but I don't know. Like, it's not that strong. It's, I mean, it's nice. I think I should grab it. I can see turns where this helps out. We take card draw here for sure. Yeah, it, and, you know, there is synergy with the Trader's Quill. We look for Endless because I do think Endless Formless Child is very strong here. Removal dupe. Consider the alternatives. What do you dupe? Titan's gratitude again? Okay, that's true. That's a pretty good spell. We could make another tiny lady if you wanted to fit more nonsense down. We're already struggling to play six of them, but, you know, we could always make a, th a ninth, a seventh, whatever that is. Removals are good, too, admittedly. Where am I going on eight? I don't know about that dupe magic shop dupe i don't i didn't see the hallowed halls and i don't really feel like a holdover is it necessarily probably the removal and the magic seal shop okay okay if i tunnel of removals i get down to 24 cards here and i can really shrink this to just the key point like reforms guardian's amulet and crushing demise basically and the bombs interesting interesting i actually think if we just lean in on spells i think we might be able to full send here okay i think the right side is actually pretty good we just don't worry too much about the formless child yeah okay this is strange i'll admit but i think it's right i am gonna do chill wind too do i want to go spell weakness too is there ever a world I can do Spell Weakness to and then connect a Titan's Gratitude with a boss? That is weird. 
But she's not contributing much else, is the thing. 10 HP, maybe she does something useful here. I don't know. She could survive one wave of the Divinity on top floor. Incredible. I'm actually going to go Spell Weakness 2 here because I do think I'm going to be grabbing spells. And if this ever connects with Chaste or Divinity, I think it can be game winning potentially. Yeah, it literally doubles her spell weakness. It's not what I like to do here, but it is acceptable. Spell chain, ten and piercing again. I don't think it's either of these. I'm going to remove trash. So we're cutting what? What do I consider to be trash here? The bad titan's gratitude. Yeah, that's going away. We're not. We're not seeing another magic shop is the thought process so in that case there's no world i want to do anything with this titan's gratitude it can go away the good ones we keep around yeah we hold on to the good ones i might consider removing hmm, the crystallis actually i did put a plus 10 in it but i don't actually think it's that good most of these other cards are full send like they consume and go away we definitely need to remove something that is non-consuming but i also have such a high density of units that need reforms that keeping like five reforms in this run is going to be correct i think it is the crystallis here actually yeah i think we cut you we're down to the wire here think about what's left in this deck it's Crushing Demise for one, Dead Weights for three, right? Okay, so four, the Guardian's Amulet, five, Molded, six, Offering Token, ten, Primitive Molds, and then twelve, Titan's Gratitudes. I think you do just dupe another Titan's Gratitude here. This is going to become an angle, and I think it's a good angle, right? I do think it's good. Now, granted, that does mean that we don't get exactly 100 shards, which kind of sucks. That's true. You're not wrong. Now, hold up. If I... Okay, I always have these frozen lances if we get a make a really bad decision. I was thinking, okay, if I go to this next temple at 95 and I get plus 10 in piercing and plus 30 am I screwed the answer is no because in the worst of case I could do a 10 in piercing into a frozen lance or something I hate it but it's not bad the consideration then is is there a spell chain that is stronger maybe you could you could do spell chain crushing demise here and What if I do go left? You see me thinking this through. What if you spell chain a crushing demise here? You put a minus one in it. And then I go left. And I dupe the guardian's amulet. I think guardian's amulet could... Two of these with a small enough deck and enough discards could be functional. Especially if they show me a minus two. I think that is right. I think I am going to crush spell chain here. This dupe now is what? This one is big spell damage, I think. Big spell damage energy, I think, is correct here. Yeah, 110. I will only take something from this upcoming one if it's a minus two, because I'll put it into the Guardian's Amulet before duping it. We move on from here. Otherwise, I'm going to put a minus one in it and dupe it aggressive amulet this is a low damage output combat i think we can push through these numbers and i want this money i did take the boon of the blacksmith too if things are really nasty so it's not that bad we do lady lady and i toss tethys downstairs and we actually kill everything offering token hey guardian's amulet let's go sure why not I don't think we want to Hallow Dripping Sis. We hold off for the moment. Okay. Cool. I am 100%. This is basically Tiny Lady goes bottom floor now. Right? As an option. She could go in front. I think we do actually Lady, Lady, Lady middle. And then we just 
We definitely want to Titan's Gratitude to the bottom because it kills that guy. So I think we have to do one of the ladies upstairs. We want bottom floor to get that formless child. So we're going to do normal lady upstairs. Other normal lady upstairs. Tiny lady, I guess, can also just kind of chill up here. Sure. I want to Titan's Gratitude away the front tele here, which almost kills the floor. Yes. I mean, that, that does kill the floor, right? It does. Yeah, there that guy's not surviving. Cool. And then I want to play Formless Child downstairs. Takes a hit. I give up a lady here, but I think it's correct to do it. Because we get the sick reform now. I can absolutely blast a guy upstairs. Blast a guy middle. It's good. We're going to play big lady in middle here. That's nice. She swings hard. I do think we want to... We're gonna send one upstairs for sure. I'm gonna send one mid floor for sure. I'm gonna send one bottom floor for sure. Cool. This should be good. As I punch my desk, we love to see it. Draw past this, see what we hit. It's gonna be a mold here. Okay, mold front, good. I'm gonna hallow drippings here. I will frozen lands here and we clear the floor, I think. I don't need to do a crush anywhere. Let's just send it, I suppose. Cool. We have a lot of reforming to do here, which is the play. Basically, just reform as much as possible. I do have a really good Formless Child hit, though. We play that upstairs, and we start building this floor out. Fun. I really want to play this other lady, shockingly. Yeah, okay, fine. We're going to chill, I suppose. I don't really want to put her out because I, I would rather reform the good ones, is the thought. Yeah, okay. Sure. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so we get another very powerful one here, which is good. I will play it down. Cool. That adds a lot of damage here. We're going to just pump this number as well as we can. very strong floor. I do think we want to mold something back here. I think it's going to be the formless child. I do want to play it middle because space is a thought and I'm going to just send the deep offering here. Yeah, we get the we get the kill actually. Thanks to the big spell weakness angle. Cool. So yeah, you see the, the flimsiness of my floor. It's got a lot of raw HP, but how is it handling an 80 damage incoming attack? It doesn't do it very well is the problem. That is that is a true statement. I could take another Urchin Spines. Really lean in on the spell weakness stuff. It's not a bad idea. Full disclosure, it's actually pretty good. We're going to do it. Because there's nothing in this deck that I really want to draw into is the thing. That's just a true statement. Resin removal. That's also a possibility, right? <laughs> Resin removal everything. I don't think we want to take things that have to stick around, though. So we get through ring seven. I go to the left, and I go for this dupe angle. What do I see? Give me resin block, maybe? No? Okay, it's fine. Give me a minus two, maybe? No? Okay, it's fine. Woof. Rough. Rough times. I think the first minus one has to go on Crushing Demise. We don't have a lot of Ember to be playing one then two, but zero then one is certainly doable. A plus 10, I'm not seeing it. Remove Consume, still not seeing it. We spin this. Permafrost is a consideration now. Sigiled Seaweed is really good. Click that. Reroll this. Flicker's Liquor, I do have a lot of units. That's pretty cool. This could just make things playable, right? I could just play out the Guardian's Amulet then. Uh, I mean, fair. Fair enough. You're not wrong. I do think it needs some kind of an upgrade here. I think this needs to get the Guardian's Amulet, possibly. Although, you could consider freezing it now, like we talked about before. Duping it, taking Flicker's Liquor, and then just playing them when they get hit. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm going to do this because the thing about these cards, 
if I permafrost them, they always get played. They either get played naturally when I flickers liquor them out. They get played naturally when I discard them, thanks to my Titan's Gratitudes or Deep Offerings, or they or my no, Offering Token, or because they, they, they never get discarded. Yeah, this is correct, actually. And then the minus one here can go into, I guess, a primitive mold. Sure, it's fine. I'm going to buy the Flicker's Liquor for sure. And probably a removal is my thought process here. I think duping the Guardian's Amulet is an important part of this run. Woof, what a weird run, yeah? I'm gonna buy this removal. Now the question is what in the world do you cut? My answer is I think it's one of the ladies. I, maybe, oh man, I don't know. Is it a lady? It might be. I mean, I really can chew through these reforms though is the thing. I really think it's fine. You could drop the offering token here. I don't need the incant and I have other means of discarding. They're not very reliable though, right? I have no guarantee I ever connect urchin spines with uh, urchin spines. There's no re guarantee I ever connect Titan's gratitude with the guardian's amulets. Can we rely on the flickers liquor to do it for us? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe. What if I drop to five ladies? How does this look? What if I drop the formless child? I think formless child is good. Anytime he gets a plus 20 on a lady, we're killing it here, right? That's just value. How do I feel about four primitive molds and a molded? I think I need enough primitive molds to actually reform as many ladies as I have. I think it might be a lady cut here. Think about that last combat and the fact that I didn't play the fifth lady at all. Or the sixth lady. We had five of them down. I can assemble two solid floors here is a big, a big thought. I think that might be true actually cut one of these. I don't want to hurt the density here. Are they all dying on the same turn? They might, right? They might. If they do, we really are falling apart on that floor. I think I need to be able, I think I need the reform density. There's no world I'm cutting another one of these five cards, I think. They may not always be useful, but they will always be required. I could also, another option here, don't remove, right? I could just not take this removal and sit on my cash. It's an option too. This is very difficult. What do you remove here? I'm interested in, like, you don't have to give me your thoughts. Obviously, I'm going to make a decision here and then sit. But the density question is really difficult on this run. This is not obvious to me in any sense. You could, I think it might be a lady or nothing is where I'm at right now. Six of them is good, especially with the Flickers Liquor. They got even stronger. The question is, if you're trying to reform specific ones up to strength that they could actually clear floors, then you probably want to be careful about it, right? Because the more you have, the harder it is to connect with the same ones. That said, waves get stronger from here. And the tint, even with the plus eight, is a low damage combat. If that were, imagine that were shade wings, right? We would, we would have like, there's no way we could have taken the plus eight. Our floors would have been, get, been getting sent. The strongest floor on Divinity is what, like 120 damage? If you factor the multi-strike, we have no backline access. That floor also gets spell chain, or rather the spell shield. Pretty crazy. We could potentially Guardian's Amulet those floors. I think you cut the late, one of the ladies here. And our angle, our hope, is to hit the Guardian's Amulets into these floors that are critical. And basically drain the divinity to zero 
and we spell chain to cycle our units. Yeah, I think we do cut a lady here and we lean hard on a single floor. We'll cut one of the two spacers, leave the one spacer in. Yeah, I think so. Five will be enough. I may as well take this plus 10. There's really no reason not to. Okay. 28 cards, 110. We're not taking anything else. I couldn't even imagine what I want to purge here. The plus 30 is not it. We move on. Okay. Monster Train. What a run. What a run of Monster Train, the video game. All right. Man, that's a rough top floor hit, huh? I think we want Tethys downstairs. Think about this for a minute. What am I doing? I'm thinking I need a draft downstairs. Well, I want to get Formless Child down there. So we're going to do big draft down here. Formless Child down here. I think Tethys goes down here too. I think we get one more lady in and then a lady upstairs to deal with this unit and we chill. Okay, bottom floor does get sent there. That's okay, actually, in my opinion. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, so here's the angle downstairs. We're going to play the lady for sure, but here's the thought. You do urchin spines middle, urchin spines middle, and we just connect for like 800 on the boss. This is going to be hard to do otherwise because it's chased, right? But we want to do this. So let's... Frozen Lance downstairs to kill this fella. Let's play the Lady Middle, which should connect on the Deep Offering. And it's not going to matter because we're discarding it, but I am going to do 875 to the boss there, and I think that's worth it. Okay, we lose a little bit on the form of the Ember Drain. Digital Seaweed did not connect, but that's okay. I do want a hyper power bottom floor to the best of my ability here. Cool, I like that. I think this is a... Hmm, I think this is... A... We play the draft lady somewhere. The question is just where. I think we put this downstairs here, which kills one of them. We can Frozen Lance here to push some damage through. I kind of don't want to draw this Hallow Drippings again, so I'm just going to play them out. Then that lets us insta-kill the front guy. Yeah, and push some numbers through, which is okay. I do like that. Every little bit matters. Okay, we finally see the sap angle. We're going to reform Bur formless child here in order to get this we need to put it behind the lady upstairs and play out all this sap okay wait no this one got this one got ember this one got ember drained this one got uh silenced so i don't need to do it downstairs i kind of prefer the death here so sure we'll we'll cut some offering into yeah, we'll do it on middle. Eight sap is not a lot. This does add up if I can hold on to any of it. I don't think I need the spell chain here. Well, I am reforming. I actually want to push this 100 through instead. I was going to crush middle, but I think pushing the 100 is better. I'll chill. We chill. Okay. Fine. Have big draft energy downstairs. It's good. We like it when they get upgraded here. Big fan of that. I think this is a reform first angle. Yeah, we get the burn the formless child, which is sick. Formless child lands upstairs. Okay. And then I'm gonna crush him to get the the lady back in a big way and now i reform again yeah 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 and then we play it crush it and 
Ah, oh, we can't tank with it, sadly. It's. I was thinking, ah, oh, we can get it, and then I was like, ah, oh, wait, no, we don't have it, actually. Uh, I can play Tiny Lady on bottom, which is pretty big value here. Slot her in, she's huge. I do want to get the Guardian's Amulet on bottom, that's for sure happening. Just keep as much sap as we can. See if I can get Formless Child killed somehow is good. And then we'll play this other sick lady up there. I would like very much to just kill enemy here, if possible. Do I want to leave in this other purge copy? Not really. We're, we'll burn it. Okay, fine. All right, I think we're gonna do some damage here. Okay, yeah, we get the formless child killed, which is great news. Oh man, thank you, Sid Sigiled Seaweed, absolute hero. I will play out a drop of dead weight here. Watch this. I want to do it this way because I can do primitive mold here to get back a lady. I realize this is not what I really want here, but I think the play is we do Lady Middle on this one. I'm gonna Guardian's Amulet the boss. I'm gonna save Formless Child here, right, is the angle. It seems weird, but there's no reason to bring Formless Child back, so we save it, which pushes another 55 through, which I'm okay with. Okay, we lose Tethys, but that's fine with me. I get molded on... Honestly? Tethys here, because the Formless Child dies and we get a real sick play there. So that's good. Tethys swings and does a whole bunch of work. We blast Titan's Gratitude and then we send Deep Offering here. I can offering token out the Guardian's Amulet here, which is cool. And we want to leave Lady in the pile here for Formless Child. So then the real question, I could just do Double Crush. Yeah, we just crush here. Sure, you crush. We reform. We got the Lady, unfortunately, which means we are getting Tethys instead, but we then play the Lady. Then we crush it again, and then we Titan's Gratitude this, and we push all that damage through. We do connect with the Lady anyway here. Yeah, we're actually going to be okay, I believe. It is... Lady Angle in back here, for sure. Guardian's Amulet, yeah, sick, we got it. And then I don't have to do anything too fancy here. I'll draw past some stuff. Yeah, cool, I get the molded here, which actually is what I was hoping for. Bring back Tethys, I believe, was the play. Great news, she burns out, of course, but it's fine. Cool. All right, Guardian Zamula did great work. This is enough damage to kill as long as I get free turns like this. So I do think it is possible for us to beat the Divinity in this exact same manner. Chase was also cutting my sap. I think that we can create some truly nonsense plays here as long as I articulate my turns correctly. Okay, this is actually a pretty good turn because I can accelerate through the run. The question really becomes, what am I playing into? I think we play in a top floor here and we look for some sap angle. We're definitely gonna connect Liquor's Liquor on the deep offering. Cause here's what you do, you do Tethys first. It either makes the lady free or the deep offering free and you have enough ember from there no matter what because if the lady goes free then she plays and she connects with deep offering so i can also do the urchin spines into titan's gratitude on the boss right away which is pretty cool it turns out pretty cool i believe we urchin spines that i will titan's gratitude this wow what a high roll being able to see the tight the deep offering play like this i'm gonna put this downstairs who actually know Look at this, Rules of Containment drops all those damage shields. We're actually chilling. Okay, I'll draw. 
We didn't hit any of the big plays, but truly I'm okay with this, right? Yeah, we are fine with this, and we chill here. Oh no, Teth has died. It's actually just fine. Cool. Like, it's actually super chillin', in my opinion. We do... Lady Middle. Lady Middle. I think I play the Tethys out upstairs or wherever I feel like putting it. We do Lady. He clears the floor. We do get the Guardian's Amulet upstairs, which is kind of cool. I like that. I could, man, what do I, where do I play this? I think Tethys is chilling on mid floor here. It is a good choice. She kills everything and will cruise. Now the question then becomes, where do I play my other units? I have one more lady coming up. Top floor is gonna fall apart a bit. Or at least I kind of hope it does. Playing it middle, possibly tempting. Divinity is weak here. Sap is immediately effective. Okay, this is the most important decision of the run because, or the remaining of the run, because on Seraph, you yeah, you just play the Guardian's Amulet on Seraph, right? It's not that tough of a decision. But here I'm like, okay, I need to think about the floors, and I also need to think about where I'm playing my units. I'm drawing one lady next turn, and none of my ladies are dying. So bottom floor is going to be Harvest Wave, and I'm probably going to get chewed through. I think bottom floor is therefore out. Mid floor is an option. I save a huge amount of incoming damage here. I could lean in on mid floor. Probably pretty good here. That's true. I could play top floor as well. I think we're going to go mid floor, actually. We cleared this. I will Urchin Spines upstairs, I believe. I believe is pushes damage through to the boss. We've already done 900-ish damage here, which is pretty awesome. Any damage we push through on these floors is an easier relentless, which is great news. Spell shield is going to be annoying. I really should have considered the resin removal a little closer, but I thought I was considering my draw density too much. I, I actually, I think you could have gone either way on it. Right, because I might not have connected the resin removals on the right floors. Anyway, let's Urchin Spines upstairs. We'll just hold on to that spell weakness for a rainy day. I think that's reasonable. Tethys is perished. That's okay. Okay. This is an interesting floor. I have... Three cards... That cost Ember. If I play... The Frozen Lance out. Oh, at least something got harvested out to zero here. I'm glad to see that. Mid floor's not looking great. I probably crush mid floor. This is tiny lady though, which is good. So I think the angle is you Frozen Lance downstairs. Now, reason is because I want to abuse Flicker Slicker. So if I Frozen Lance, the only two in my hand are Formless Child and Lady. I then play the Lady, and it either hits the card I want, Guardian's Amulet, or it hits Formless Child, which then hits Guardian's Amulet. And no matter what, the Lady costs one, I have two Ember, I can still play Formless Child, which then would connect with the Crushing Demise Purge copy. So I think the angle is we drop the Frozen Lance bottom, like I said. Get that out of there. I am going to play Lady here. How much damage is coming in? 745. Not a lot. 7.45. Oh, the reason she dies is actually because of spikes on the front, right? Is that true? Oh, no, it's the two damage in the back. Okay. So there's a lot of factors here. I can play her in front, though, in order to get this kill, which, or rather to save the HP here, which is big. Cool. We hit the Guardian's Amulet, which plays immediately on middle here. This is a fine choice for me. This disables this floor in a big way. I then immediately just double crush bottom and this floor is neutered. 
Got it. Very good. Save the Hallow Drippings for the moment. I don't get the Formless Child out in this particular order, but this worked out in my favor because I get the Purge Copy instead, which I'm fine with. Cool. So this floor's real big threat is gone. Ooh, Silenced Chains is good. I could double crush bottom and just end chains, which is absolutely happening. We crush once, we crush again. He's just gone. That boss is, is removed from continuity here. Excellent. I love that. I'm going to reform Tethys. <laughs> you uh, might as well reform Tethys here. She lives. She's got 20 HP, okay? I'm going to play her upstairs because she connects Bell Weakness to this floor, which is kind of cheeky. I like that. I Hallow Dripping's middle. And then I blast it. And we clear this floor out, too. The whole train is now empty, which is actually good. Cool. I do quite like that. All right. This is cheeky now. I'm going to continue sapping out middle because I think that's a good idea. Good. Mid floor is essentially disabled here. I definitely am able to connect. I could Guardian's Amulet upstairs and just save Tethys too, which is kind of funny. I can also just do like a million damage here, which I think I will for sure have to do. I'm going to reform one. Okay, check it. I want to play this downstairs. Do I? No, I'll play it upstairs. Of course I will. Yeah, duh. And then I put Formless Child downstairs, so she just dies. Good job. Goodbye. I could sap and save Tethys, but she burns out anyway. It's just a matter of do I want this spell weakness in here? I don't really care all that much. I think playing this on middle secures mid floor. I think we're winning this. Let's let's sap upstairs just so I get the the spell weakness through, and we're just gonna send another 875 here. A surprising run, honestly. Just like a very strange run overall. Yeah, very odd. I do really want to connect this Guardian's Amulet here. So I want to do like a Primitive Mold here. Oh, bar formless Child, incredible. Yeah, you play this out, which makes something else free. And this now guarantees me what I want here. You then Primitive Mold, right? This looks strange, but you now Ethis, which hits the Lady, which hits the Guardian's Amulet, which neuters Middle. I didn't look at bottom, but top floor is looking pretty tasty here as well. I may as well conserve. I really need this burnout, huh? Yeah, sure. I can accept the Ember Drain here. I, I don't need Formless Child to die. Sure, we'll do it upstairs then. Hold on to her for next turn. Sure, 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 sure. I think I do need to sap out this middle floor because I did not get the silence on middle there. Let's draw and see what we hit. Ooh. Well, not what I wanted to see. I think having... The, I wish I could go to a different floor with this Guardian's Amulet. I think we just play it upstairs. Well, do I? It's hard to say, because if I play it out, none of the enemies attack here. Which is good and bad, I suppose. It's fine. It's fine. That disables them in a big way, which I think is good. Mid floor is losing something. We're going to Titan's Gratitude here, which clears the top floor. I think I do want to think about Steel Slate dying here. Mid floor. I mean, d never do this here because the spell shield stops her from doing anything productive. You may as well pop this, but I think the answer is actually just damage the Steel Slate, who could theoretically leak here. I lose two Ember next turn. Tough. Tough, tough, tough. Okay, so I think the play is you crush, crush, middle. 
Yeah, I think you crush crush metal. That's actually a really good crush. Hitting that one first is pretty big here. I think I could gratitude gratitude upstairs. Maybe connect the the. Yeah, I'll gratitude one. Gratitude two. Mm, we didn't get it, but we do kill that floor now. I was hoping to avoid this triple ember drain threat, but I believe we're going to be okay. As long as I hit a zero cost molded, I think we can move our next turn. I get this guardian's alien in my hand though, which I'm fine with. Let's crush bottom. Sure. Anything I kill, just that's relentless potentially. Sure. Okay. I think we're winning, but this turn is scary. Yeah, because I have no ember. I get the molded, though. I'm gonna bring back the lady, because she's free. Right? That's good. Okay, I think we can activate our turn here. Yeah, so offering token here to drop out an amulet middle, which neuters this floor. Then I want to primitive mold back my other friend. I can potentially get this lady out. Putting her in front is gonna matter upstairs though. Let's do it. Ooh, hitting the guardian's amulet here is really good. Really good. We're gonna go ahead and do that upstairs. I will play the formless child. Yeah, I did this order because I wasn't sure how this would look. We lose the lady, sadly, but I think we win off of the back of top floor. Gets it, actually. Incredible news. I can reform here and create a pretty solid mid-floor angle, too. Right? You just get a lady out, and then we get another lady out. And we send one. This floor burns out, but does pretty well. We win this run. Very unlikely approach, but we take it. Goodbye, Tethys, but she did great. So honestly, we're okay. I'll tell you, I was expecting to leak something in the end there. I did not think we would pull that off. I didn't think we would avoid leaking everything, which is very surprising that we did, but a very cool run. I think a tough one to solve, but a great example of, let's go to the run summary. I'll show you what I mean. A great example of setting up for an X5 and playing out the run as a result. I think removing that last lady, by the way, exactly perfect. I think we had a perfect cadence with their floors. And I also think leaning in on spell weakness to Tethys mattered. We did a lot of damage to the divinity just by sending it on one of these three Titans gratitudes. The Guardian's amulet pickup was really important, by the way. Just identifying that I had no answer and that this could be an answer, especially in the presence of a double stack, and then seeing it, that was big. I also think Flicker's Liquor was very important to this run. It would have been very hard to navigate the multiple Guardian's Amulets otherwise. I probably would have had only one of these then and would have been looking at maybe a fourth Titan's Gratitude to clear out floors or something like that. Hard to predict, but I think we did good. We did a great job. I'm just going to say it like that. We managed to crushing demise every single mini boss. We didn't have to think about them. One of them got silenced, so we didn't get the curse. You'll love to see it. Thank you, Sigiled Seaweed. Very cool. Big salute. And yeah, what a weird run, but we take the victory. This is another example of a run that I think, how the hell do you win this at 200 shards? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, you, I, I don't know. You can get past the mini bosses because you crush them, but the divinity has just so much HP. I think your floor falls apart. You can reach 200 shards, but it's gross. And there's no real high roll here whatsoever. So, all right, fair enough. It does bring us up to 178 wins in the series. Go team, I can continue the recording session. So I'll let you go there. 
So hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks. Phew, what a toughie.